Hello, welcome to my channel and my cluttered car. Today I'm going to compare my Rhino Rack to my Yakima Rack. Welcome back and thanks for being here. I had mentioned on my Yakima video that I was fairly certain that the Yakima Rack is a little louder than the Rhino Rack. Later, I realized that the window deflectors that I was testing at the time make noise of their own, which caused me to doubt whether or not the Yakima Rack was really that loud. So I decided to put the Yakima Rack back on. Actually, first I did the Rhino Rack, then the Yakima Rack, so I could do some new baseline testing. And sure enough, the Yakima Rack is a little louder. I don't know that I could measure a sound pressure difference with a meter, but as far as hearing it, you can definitely hear the difference. Now I think that that has something to do with the positioning on the rack. The Yakima, you know, Yakima calls for the rack to sit a little further forward on the roof, which in my opinion puts the, the front crossbar especially more in the wind. And the Yakima rack does sit a little higher than the Rhino rack. Now one of the challenges with this Yakima rack, the Rhino rack, I'm actually able to shove it further back onto the roof. And I thought I would do that with the Yakima rack, but Yakima's clips on the rear are shaped a little differently than the Rhino rack clips are, so I can only go back so far with it. And that, again, that has to do with the shape of the clips. The, the, the Yakima clips are not as long as the Rhino rack clips, and they fit closer to the body. So the, the further back I try to move that crossbar, the closer the clips come to the paint and making serious contact. So I just can't go back. What I'm gonna do, since I'm talking about the noise, I'm gonna give a few moments of silence to, uh, to give you the comparisons. Now I'm gonna share clips that I took last night, but here is what the Rhino Rack sounds like. Here, check out this noise. Here's what the Yakima Rack sounded like in a very similar condition, same stretch of road. Check this out. Now that was an obvious difference, and, and I hope you can hear it. The, the Rhino Rack, it might have been making some noise, but whatever noise it was making, it was not sufficient to overcome the noise of the traffic all around me, where the Yakima Rack very definitely was overcoming that traffic noise. So big difference. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me give you a listen to what no crossbar sounds like. Check this out. All right, so that's the uh, that's the, the noise and wind samples. Uh, to me, the Rhino Rack is the clear winner on that. Now, something else that I discovered quite by accident, each of these racks have clips that are used to clamp the, uh, the foot pads to the door jam of the car. And I already mentioned the fitment of the clips on the rear of the Yakima Rack, but what I didn't realize was going to be a problem um, installing the Yakima rack for the very first time uh, the clips are not attached to the rack and so I was able to just mindlessly take the rack and stick it on top of the car get a position where I like it and then walk around and just slip the clips up in there it seemed very easy um, super easy in fact where with the um, the Rhino rack the uh, clips are are 
you basically thread on the, the threads to get the clips there. And so they are, once you thread those bolts in, the clips are, I'll say permanently attached, but you know what I mean, it's not permanent, but it's they're, they're fixed in there. The Yakima rack, what I tried to do there was, once I got the clips in there, when it came time to take them off, I opened everything up and uh, loosen the clips up and I really like that the uh, Yakima clips will pop open like this and then they're clear but so then once the, the the clips pop open I'm able to just lift the rack off and walk off with it and that's really cool but then what happens is if you turn the rack upside down to store it or to I don't know just if you're transporting them and you just happen to turn them those clips they're not in there permanently the uh, there's nothing threading through them to make sure that they stay in place and so they're just kind of held on by hooks so the clips fall out the rhino rack does not have that issue like i mentioned um, the clips are held in they're, they're basically bolted into place and then they won't fall off or go anywhere so it, it's hard to say who wins on that but for convenience i like the uh, the rhino rack clips more than i thought i would and sure they're not they don't pop out and be and they're not held clear of the um, the body of the car like the Yakima clips are but it's not really a big deal once you get um, a technique established for installing them the t-bolt slot um, when I did the Yakima review I discussed how its T-bolt slot cover was different from the Rhino Rack. The Rhino Rack has a, uh, a peel-up strip, and if you need to put T-bolt accessories onto the rack, then you cut the strip so that the bolts can then protrude through where the cover would be. Yakima has what looks like a fairly ingenious method of the T-bolt slot cover is actually a, a piece that fits inside and it it fills up from underneath so when you need to put a t-bolt into it you then compress it and then slide the t-bolt into place and uh, in the Yakima video I gave it some pretty good praise it in concept is a very cool feature uh, convenient it looks good but in practice it is a hassle it's to get the T-bolt in, you compress it, and of course in the video I was doing it with just one hand, and so one-handed, it is a little more difficult to manipulate, but even with two hands, you put one finger in and then you slide in the T-bolt, and there's constant pressure on the bolt, and then you have to slide the bolt past all the friction of the rubber uh, underneath it, and it just gets to be a little difficult, and so, um, I don't know, it's... It, it's not terrible, but but it's just when you compare that to how much easier it is to move the T-bolt in and out without rubber underneath it, it's way better. On top of that, I learned, and I think I even said something about it in the Yakima video, that just leaving a T-bolt in place overnight was enough to deform that rubber piece. And sure, if you let the rubber sit out in the hot sun for a day, that little indentation that happens from being compressed, it will self-heal, but it will not self-heal unless it is in blazing hot sun. If it's just from regular, say, 80 degree weather, and certainly during the winter, it will not heal. It will stay deformed for weeks, and that's kind of unattractive. And I don't know, so I, I was so unmoved by the practicality of Yakima's T-bolt cover that I went ahead and just removed it and then I put some of Rhino Rack's T-bolt slot covers on it and it is way better um, and on top of that more and more companies are making accessories that do not require T-bolts and so for the most part I don't use T-bolt accessories obviously if I'm doing if I have my, my cargo box mounted and I want to mount my ham radio antenna up there, which I think I've done a video about that, 
mounting ham radio antenna with a cargo box mounted. That uses a T-bolt accessory. This is a very uncommon practice for me to have T-bolt accessories on the car, especially now that my other project kind of fell through. So I don't need the T-bolt functionality so much. Now one thing that the Yakima rack does uh, win in big time because of its uh, flat non-flush bar, it's wider, is uh, capacity altogether. The Yakima bar is 50 inches wide compared to the Rhino rack's flush bar being only 39 inches wide. So if I need uh, bulk or capacity, not weight capacity, but just size capacity, the, uh, the Yakima bar takes the cake. Uh, cost. Um, the Yakima bars are more expensive. They're about $100 more right now. And, um, you know, that's something to consider. Now, something that I learned while I was doing a little bit of research for this video is the Rhino Rack, it's been renamed. It's still a Vortex crossbar, but the rack that I have right now is called the Vortex 2500 RS, but it has been replaced by the Vortex ROC 25. And it's a good looking uh, rack. It's, I'm, I'm sure functionally it's identical, but um, cosmetically there are some changes, which I think are probably more aerodynamic and an improvement overall. So uh, yeah, that's my observation of the rack. What perfect timing. I am at my destination and I have just concluded talking about the difference between these two racks. I'm still working on the trailer and making good progress. Maybe next week I will share some things that I have accomplished with that. Until then, I appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time. Take care. The bolts don't hold the clips in. They just provide a shaft for the clips to sit on and uh, then they won't fall off or go anywhere.